Thank you for your interest in Itaman, the next generation of item and test analysis software. Itaman is designed to not only provide statistical analysis with classical test theory to evaluate the reliability and validity of your tests and their scores, but also to automatically produce high quality Microsoft Word documents or reports that can be printed and distributed to subject matter experts for the review of items. To run Itaman, click on the itaman.exe. If you do not have Itaman, you can download it from www.assess.com. That is assess.com. That is the website of Assessment Systems Corporation, the owner of Itaman. A trial version of the software is available there. Graduate students can obtain a four month free complete unlock trial if they contact Assessment Systems Corporation. Itaman runs by utilizing two input files, a data matrix file and an item control file, as you see here. Sample files are provided with the software. So if we first go look at the sample data file with multiple choice data only, we can see that the data is in fixed column format. You can also utilize CSV format if your data is in CSV files saved from spreadsheets. Uh, one thing that's important to note here is how many characters of ID there are. So you can see that there are six characters of ID and that the test data, that is the response to the first question, begins in column seven. We will need to remember that when we run the program. The next step is to, the next step is to make a control file. And we'll show you here the sample control file. There are six columns in this control file. The first is the item name, and I've simply named these items, item one, item two, item three. The correct answer, or the key. The number of alternatives. These are all four option multiple choice questions. The domain or content area of the item. You can see that there are three domains in this test. Whether to include the item in the analysis, or we call this the item status code, a Y means yes included in the analysis, N means no, do not include it, and a P, like this, this question or this question, means a pretest item. That is, we want to calculate the statistics for the item, but do not count it towards the final score for the student. And lastly, we have the item type. In this case, these are all multiple choice questions, but you can change them to rating scale questions if you need to. So then to run item N, we will go back to the program and we specify the data matrix file. So we go into the sample files folder and get our data file for the MC only. And then we do a control file and we choose that control file that we built. The easiest way to make those control files is to either use the sample as a template and copy that. Or what I prefer to do is use a uh, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that I call KeyMaker, you can see it in the background here, and make the control file there because it allows you to copy and paste and drag and drop more easily than text file. And then you can simply copy a table from Excel, paste it into a text file, and it will automatically create that tab delimited text file that we need as an input for the control file. The next step is to name the output file and I will just call this sample MC and change the name if you want to sample MC this is the title that will appear on the front page of the report then we go to the input format tab uh, this tells the program how to read in the data file and remember I said that we should note that the data file we're using has six columns of ID actually five columns and then one space, but we will call that six columns. And data begins in column seven. And you can see I have that information already inputted here. You have the option to change the default values for all of these by uh, changing the defaults.options file that you see up here. Uh, you can also specify an omit character and a not administered character. Uh, those are important in data sets where you have sparse data or missing data. If you have two groups in your data, that is demographic groups where you wish to test for differential item functioning, 
uh, you can do that here. You will have one column in your data file that will be, for example, M and F for male and female, and you can use that to set up a diff test. The next tab is the scoring options tab where we can create scaled scores for the exams. And you can do that for the total score and for each of the domains. In this case, we have three domains. And you can either do it standardized uh, based on a mean and standard deviation uh, if you want to have everything on a standard normal type scale. Or you can do a linear transformation. And we will multiply everything by 2 and add it to 100. If your test is for a pass or fail or similar dichotomous classification, you can use that down here. For example, if you want to say that everybody who gets at least 21 questions right will pass, you can set it up like this. And then lastly, you can specify some options for the report that is going to be produced. Uh, the first is for the item statistics. Uh, this is useful because what it is is setting the ranges of acceptable statistics for your items. This is done to flag items for having potentially problematic statistics. For example, we might want to set this at 0.30. What that will do then is flag all items with the p-value or difficulty less than 0.30. Uh, and the, we are considering those items to be too difficult or too hard, and we want to flag them for review. Uh, conversely, we might want to flag all items with a difficulty above 0.95 because we consider those too easy. Uh, the values to put into those two spots, in fact all of these spots here, are up to you based upon uh, the background you have with your testing program and the purposes of your test. Uh, the item mean range is also for the difficulty of the item but refers to polytomist data, that is rating skill or partial credit, uh, where the difficulty statistic is a mean rather than just a p-value. And then acceptable item correlation range is for the point by serial correlations, uh, also called the discrimination index. And we usually want those to all be positive, uh, so the bottom here is zero. And if you like, you can exclude the omits, that is, skipped responses from the option statistics. And you also have the option to correct the item total score correlations, that is, the point by serials, or the discriminations, for spuriousness, which refers to the fact that the score for the item is also included in the score total score on the exam. So by correlating an item with an exam, you're correlating it with itself to some extent, which artificially inflates the correlation. Um, so you want to correct for that bit. Then the last section of output options is down here. Uh, we can choose the number of decimal places of precision in our table. Um, I will reduce that to two here, just an example. Then we choose to produce quantile plots. Uh, quantile plots are the best way to visually assess the quality of each item in your test. Uh, so we want to look at those quantile plots here. And then if you want the actual numbers that are in the quantile plot, you can produce an additional table that just contains those numbers. Uh, what the quantile plots do is divide your sample up into groups based upon ability. So for example, uh, if we set this at three, there will be three score groups. So we've got the lowest third, the middle third, and the highest third of examinees. And then within each of those, we're going to calculate what percentage or what proportion chose each response. So if we have four option multiple choice and three score groups, there are going to be three by four or 12 points that we're going to be plotting. And you'll see that in our uh, output that I'll show next. And then if you want to, you can save scored item responses, that is 0, 1 data, after having in red ABC data. It will convert it to 0, 1 for you if you need it for other software. And then if you're using additional optional inputs, uh, using a, a legacy type input that we call uh, Itemman 3.0 or Itemman 3.6, you can save the new item control file here. So this is all ready to run. The analysis will continue. As you can see, once the analysis has been completed, it will show you a confirmation message asking you if you wanted to open 
the directory for the output file. And in this case, I'm going to choose no and simply go and look at the output file myself. A review of the output file and explanations of how to interpret it will be included in a separate tutorial video. Thank you.